for an integrated and equitable territorial development, both women and men need to become active agents and manage their partnership for positive changes. To facilitate these changes, it is essential that we revisit our pre-existing ideas about roles of women and men. This calls for a concerted effort to gather critical data that shows the differences between men and women and allows us to improve our understanding about gender roles. Asset portfolios of rural men and women can be constructed by inventorying their resources, listing their actions and telling their products, and they can be used as a window to improve our understanding of the dynamics of gender roles for agriculture and food. However, practical and effective methods and tools to carry out as analysis of asset portfolios are still not easy to come by and are not available for local organizations. The approach of building and analyzing the asset portfolios was structured on four research questions. How contribution of women in rural economy of Nicaragua has changed over the last 10 years? What are the similarities and differences between current asset portfolios of farms that are owned and managed by men and women within a single territory? What are the differences in the asset portfolios of the families and the women who live in those families in one territory? And what are the opinions of rural women and men about control and access of productive resources and how that influences food security in their households? The study focused on rural women and men from small-scale farm households living in Rancho Grande, a rural municipality located in northern Nicaragua. We employed a four-tier multi-level approach combining national and regional rural dynamics data. In the first tier, we compared the census data of 2001 and 2011 to understand the trends of the major indicators. In the second tier, we analyzed and compared the available data on the farm household service for men and women farmers of Rancho Grande. In the third tier, we collected and compared the data of the same indicators of household service, but for the households and the women members in a separate way from the same 18 households. In the fourth tier, we conducted a qualitative analysis of rural men and women's opinion and perception about their ownership, control, and access of the productive resources and how that influences the food security. Finally, we combined and analyzed the findings from all the four tiers to understand the underlying process of choices and accumulation shaped by the gender roles, responsibilities, and differences in control over resources. National and regional rural dynamics analysis showed that Female-headed farm households have increased between 2001 and 2011, with a large number of women managing relative more land and livestock at the national and the regional level. However, the amount of resources they own remained relatively lower than the male-headed households. Mm -hmm. Territorial household patterns showed that average size of the farms owned by men was almost double than that of women. Because of this, men farmers tend to have more diverse land uses, whereas women farmers had higher proportion of cropland. Crops and livestock have diversity were similar, when both grew food as well as cash crops. Farms owned by men register slightly higher productivity for most of the crops. Surprisingly, the milk productivity is almost three times higher for male farmers than the female farmers. In contrast, cocoa productivity was almost four times higher in the farms run by women. Average gross annual income from the farms run by men amounted to 2,800 US dollars per year, and that of women was 1,945, but women farmers tended to have a higher share of non-agricultural income, 12%, as compared to the man, 8%. The majority of the farmers, both men and women, had access to credit 
but this was not sufficient to cover their needs. Food security situation was also very similar for men and women farmers. Intra-household interaction showed that although there were no landless households in the sample, 35% of the women belonging to the same households did not have any land of their own. Even when the women had their own land, size of their holdings were small, average of 0.6 hectare, compared to the farm size of the families, which averaged 11.4 hectares. To compensate, many women accessed land through other options. 23% used family land and 6% used leased lands. The land use patterns by the family and the women were quite similar, with the exception of pastures, where one person with the total holding of women was involved in pasture, whereas for the five family households, 7% of the land was dedicated to animal raising. Diversity of crops and animals managed by women were very similar to that of the households. However, women's contribution to the total household production was higher for fruit crops and for small animals. That's a part of the home state system, followed by the agroforestry, cocoa and coffee, and much less for basic food grains and bananas. Average gross annual income of the households amounted to about $4,144 on the average, of which women belonging to the households contributed $1,528, amounting to 37% of contribution. Women contributed 31% of the agricultural income and 57% of the non-agricultural income of the households. Perception of ownership study showed a direct link between traditional gender roles like women burdened with the domestic and productive work as well as considered as being less knowledgeable than men about cattle farming and the understanding of the resource ownership. Whoever possesses more knowledge about a resource, of course, is better prepared to make decisions about it. This in turn affects women's capacity to ensure food security for their households since they are hindered for contributing to a vital source of income, in this case, cattle farming in Rancho Grande. For building and analyzing asset portfolios of men and women farmers, we use the household service available from a collective and open online learning system, as you can see in the link. For building and analyzing asset portfolios of rural women and their families, we use the data from the household survey stored in a collective online system as shown in the link. You can always access the links and look at the data, although it will test your ability to understand Spanish. The new information about the realities in the ground generated by this multi-tower approach used in this study has helped us to continue debunking myths about rural women and contribute effectively to the current debate about economic and social empowerment of women for an integrated and equitable territorial development. We have provided evidence for the fact that while women farmers are growing in numbers and managing more resources at the national and regional level, key differences remain at the territorial level in terms of resource control and productivity. These differences tend to become more evident when we look at intra-household dynamics and perception of ownerships and control of resources. This study presents an example of how to use data and information from multiple sources to build asset portfolios of rural women and men and use them as windows for analyzing the dynamics of the production system as influenced by the historical trends, gender relations, choices, and accumulation. The multi-level approach presented in this study is effective for generating integrated knowledge, which help us to understand better the realities of rural women and develop more strategic programs to accelerate the process of empowerment of rural women, both in the economic and social sphere.